Contributing to open source is really one of the most underrated and easily accessible ways to work on a real project and get real world experience under your belt and in your portfolio. Open source means software that was designed and developed and made freely available for anyone to use, to share, to modify, and to build off of. Open source software licenses their products to anyone to use the source code free of charge and for anyone to get involved with the creation of it. The keyword here is anyone. Anyone can contribute to it. These are real companies and creators working on real products and you can just volunteer to get involved. Designers can contribute in so many ways. They can contribute to branding, creating a logo, a color palette, designing landing pages for the product, critiquing the usability of a product or app, helping to write the readme file, uploading new images, design assets, and all kinds of other non-coder contributions. So why aren't more designers doing this? Contributing to open source software is really a developer-led movement. A lot of it has to do with contributing to the code repositories, such as on GitHub, and devs are recognized for their contributions by the community. But it's not very popular or talked about in the design space very much, but there are so many open source projects and different areas that need a designer's expertise. You just have to know how to find them, which ones to get involved in, and how. Here are some things we're going to cover. First is understanding some new jargon and tech. Two, finding a project and getting familiar with it. Three, understanding the most important pillar of open source. And four are some common beginner mistakes so you can avoid them. There are many different types of open source projects and some of them may be volunteer only and others might even have paid positions or tasks, but generally they tend to be set up in a very similar way. So first of all, every open source project has an open source license, and you can find out more about that at opensource.org slash licenses. Next, there will be a readme documentation file. This is the manual that contains all of the information about the project and explains why it exists, why it was created, and what's being done with it. Three is the contribution guidelines. This is the guide that contains directions for how to contribute and what's expected from contributors. Then then there is the code of conduct documentation. This contains community guidelines and rules, and this will help you know how to communicate and get along with your fellow contributors. There is an issue tracker that will also be available, and this is where you keep track of all the work that's done on GitHub and where the development happens. Not always, but there will most likely be a chat channel, such as on Slack or Discord or another forum, where you can have synchronous chats with other contributors. There are also a few open source roles. So first we have the author. This is the person or organization that created the project. Next, we have the owner role. That's the person with administrative control over the project's repository. And this may or may not be the author. Then we have the maintainers. And these are contributors who manage and drive the overall project vision and keep things moving. And then there is the contributor. That's everyone like you and me helping out with the project. And then finally, there are community members, and this is just anyone that's using the project. Projects like these live on GitHub. GitHub is the versioning system that acts as a code repository, an issue tracker, and a project management system all in one. GitHub is such a huge part of bringing our products to life, and yet very few designers, UX, UI, or graphic designers even know about it or how it works. So without getting too deep into it, Git is an open source version control system for code that is accessed via the command line. GitHub is a platform slash service created to give developers a cloud-based interface to make it more user-friendly to interact with, to track these changes, all without having to use the command line. Similarly to being able to view and interact with previous iterations of our design mockups in Figma's version history, this is what GitHub allows developers to do with their code. And in much the same way that a designer's portfolio shows off our work and our process, a dev's GitHub profile tells the story of their work through their code contributions. I highly recommend studying a bit about the basics of GitHub, such as pull requests, branches, and commits. And if you want to see me do a video about that, definitely leave a a comment if you're interested in that.
So how exactly can a designer get involved and contribute to these open source projects? Well, designers can find open source projects by browsing through GitHub. To do that, head over to github.com and click on open source, and then you'll see the repositories. You can browse by trending, by topics, by collections. So if we click on topics, we'll see a couple of really interesting ones here, and you can just browse through and find some awesome projects to get involved with. You can star them and then start the process of going through the anatomy of the project to figure out if it's a good one for you and how you can get involved. Another great source to find these projects is opensourcedesign.net slash projects. Open source design really is the hub for where you can find all of these different open source projects to contribute to as a designer or a non-coder. If you go over to projects, you'll see a list of some of the most popular ones. Some things you'll be very surprised to find out are open source. For instance, instance, my favorite WordPress. And then there is also a job board here. And this lets you just browse through all kinds of different jobs that need designers to contribute. So here's one for making a logo. Some of these are uh, unpaid and some of them are paid. For example, this is a great one for you UX designers that need some experience. Let's see what this involves. This is for Open Collective, and they're looking for a senior designer to work in the finance space. And so there are so many great projects here that you can get involved with. I really recommend you browsing these because imagine being able to put that on your resume, working for a real company, the UX UI design lead, getting that experience, working with others and working on a real project. It's absolutely invaluable. The most important pillar of open source is community. Most of these communities exist on Slack or Discord channels. So once you find a project that you like, you can join their channel and connect directly with the people involved in the project. And this is where all of the collaboration and fun happens. So if any of this is confusing or overwhelming to you, start with community first. Find a project and join a channel and start discussing things with others. They are always more than welcoming and happy to help you get involved and show you the ropes. So I want to go through some of the common mistakes that I see from first time contributors to help prepare you for getting involved in open source. First is not treating it like a real project or job. These projects are companies working on real software. And so you've got to give it the respect and care it's due. Number two is not checking out the project. Really take the time to understand if it's a good project fit for you, that you have the skills to get involved and that you would enjoy investing the time working on it, not documenting your process. If you want to add this to your portfolio or resume, make sure you document your work and your process, just like you would any real client project or UX UI case study, not managing your time. Well, managing your time can be tricky and you want to set expectations that it may take a little longer to get involved as a first time contributor. You may have to submit a proposal or an application for some projects or tasks. So make sure that you understand that some of these cycles might take a really long time and you want to figure out what type of time frame that you want to be doing this project in. Working on an open source project is not only a great way to build a very impressive real portfolio, but it also gives you practice working with others, helping real users and giving back to the tech community and also gaining a good reputation for yourself. And just remember that open source is all about community. So have fun connecting and collaborating with others in the space. In the next video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step guide of how I contribute to an actual real open source project. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that.